Hey guys, so I thought I'd do a video about, uh, I thought I'd do a series of videos about balancers, active and passive balancers, and kind of talk through the theory and try to understand, you know, how they can be useful, how they can maybe actually not be so useful. Maybe they can be detrimental to our, our batteries and, uh, you know, and how, and how we might want to think about them. This, this is going to be the first video and I'm going to talk about passive balancers. So let's jump in. Uh, recall from my prior video, we talked a lot about in that video, I talked about top balancing and bal bottom balancing, why they're important, and what kind of behavior we can expect. Um, so I'm going to use the same sort of visual uh, aid. In this case, imagine we have three cells, cell one, two, and three here. And the length of the cell is the total capacity of the cell, right? In this case, let's assume that all three uh, have the same length. So they're all identical capacity. And then this line that I'm drawing here, um, the amount of space below the line represents the amount of power in the cell. So this line is being drawn across the top. That means all three cells are fully charged. They've all got full capacity in, in here. And uh, because their total capacity is equal and they're all full, um, this is equivalent to being top balanced, right? So they all have the same balance. They all Right now, let's say they all have 3.65 volts. They're all same capacity and they're actually charged the same amount, right? So they're... We're assuming now I'm starting with three cells that are top balanced. And if you have any difficulty with this, my prior video goes into a lot about what top balancing is, how it works, and what we can expect. So if you're having stuck, if you're not quite understanding what I'm doing here, you don't quite understand what top balance is, please take a look at that video. Okay? So let's say we're in this situation. We have some cells. They're top balanced, and they're the exact same capacity. When we go to discharge this, and that's just the equivalent of lowering this line, right, these cells are going to stay balanced. Their voltages are going to be really close to each other and not diverge much. Because basically when I go to discharge, let's say I've discharged them about 80% right there, well, they've all lost the same amount of power and they all have the same amount of power, very similar amounts of power left over, right? And recall that it's the amount of power that's in the battery, the amount that the battery is actually holding that determines its charge. So they're both holding similar amounts of power and that's the same amount as a terms of percentage for each of them because they're the same capacity. So they're really well balanced. These are just squiggles to show that, hey, we've got these, this is the power left in them, right? So in an ideal setting, you don't need any balancer at all. If all your, if all your cells are really similar in terms of their capacity, <clears throat> they're very, very close and they're top balanced, we really shouldn't expect, top or bottom balanced, we really shouldn't expect them to ever leave balance. Um, my prior video talks a lot about how cells will leave balance when, when you discharge and charge them. Um, even though you top balance. But that's because in my, that example, I was talking about cells that have different amounts of total capacity. If the capacity of your cells are really well matched, then you're not going to see that behavior. You're going to see the cells totally stay really, really close to each other, and all the cells will have really similar voltages all the time, regardless of their state of charge. Okay? Um, so that's what's happening here. And in this case, it's really hard to imagine why we'd need a balancer, right? Like, what's the balancer going to do? As we go up and down, they're all going to be at the same capacity together. So what's the point of the balancer? And if that's a question you asked, that's the right question. If you have good cells and they're matched, you really shouldn't need a balancer, right? They're going to stay matched. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Um, let's say you buy your cells and they're matched. What that means is their capacity should all be identical. But it also means the internal resistance of the battery, basically the, how well the battery takes charge, um, should be very, very similar but it will differ a little over time. So an important thing to do is to check on yourselves every six months, maybe every year, maybe, maybe every two years if you really trust how things are working and you're not cycling them very often. But go in and, and, and check them and see that they're still balanced. What can happen is even if you have really well-matched cells, that means same capacity, same inter very similar internal resistance, after a year or two, they might not stay balanced. And what that looks like is this, this curve starts to bend. Maybe one cell just has a little bit lower charge than the other. This means the total capacity of the cell is the same, but now that, that cell is just, the voltage of that cell is always going to be a little bit lower, right? And when that happens is it's not so good. It means that when you go to charge and discharge, you're going to stop up here, but then you're also going to stop down there. So instead of getting the full capacity of that middle cell and the full capacity of the battery, you're only going to get a range that's something like this right? Instead of the full range out here, you're going to get something like that, right? So that's why it's bad for your batteries not to be balanced. And that can happen over time, even with really great cells, like brand new cells that are all matched. You top balance them, you put them in a battery. Two years later, or even a year later, you could go in and see that, hey, one of my cells is, is just different than the others, or all my cells don't match each other. They don't seem balanced anymore. Even when I charge them up to their full capacity, even when, when one of the cells hits 3.65, 
another cell might only hit 3.5. And we're saying to ourselves, hey, these aren't balanced anymore. Okay, that can totally happen. Can passive balancers fix this? Yeah, sure, it probably can. So in that case, what'll happen is you'll be something like this. And what passive balance, you'll have this thing, this, this line, sorry, right, where we have one cell that just has a lower voltage. What passive balancers do is they find the, the gap between the cells, this gap and this gap, and they take the higher cell and they just burn off power from that cell in the form of heat. So that, that's my heat squiggle. They're just gonna burn off heat from those. And what that's gonna do is take this curved line and flatten it totally straight. Okay, so they'll fix your balancing problem. Um, if they're on there before the balancing problem starts, they'll probably prevent the balancing problem from ever occurring. So they'll go in and they'll fix that, that balancing problem. But um, the question you have to ask yourself is, is this really necessary? Do I need to add active balancers to make sure that my balancers, my cells never go out of balance? And I'm gonna give you my answer. Um, and this isn't a, based off a crazy amount of experience, but my, my perspective on this is that you don't need to bother with a balance, passive balancer. Why? Well, for one, a passive balancer is gonna imp bring in more complexity to your cell, your battery, right? Your battery already has enough going on. It's already got a BMS in there, guaranteed, right? Please, we're all gonna use BMSs. I'm gonna do another video on why you have to do a BMS even if you have a great balancer. But you're definitely, um, you already have a BMS in there. Why spend another, you know, 50, 100 bucks on, some, on a passive balancer. What's the point, right? Um, all you really need to do to get this line straight again, if, it, if, it, if one cell was low or a few cells was low, is just top balance the whole thing again. And you might go literally years without needing to top balance, especially if you're not charging and discharging all the time. If you're charging and discharging, those differences in internal resistances are gonna manifest in terms of different voltages faster, right? The internal resistance difference is what causes that difference in voltage over time. If you're not charging and discharging that much, you're not gonna see that very often. It's gonna take a long time to do it. So you might have, literally not have to go years uh, without checking your cell. So I would say, why bother spending the money? Just check on your cells once in a while. Having that passive balancer could definitely make you, um, we don't wanna make, you don't wanna make that like sort of lazy. You don't wanna become sort of a passive user of your batteries, right? Even if you put a passive balancer on there, it's still a good idea to check the voltage of each of your cells every six months or every year, right? You don't wanna put that on there and then just think, oh, everything's totally fine. I don't need to pay attention to my battery because you know plenty of things can go wrong. One of your cells could die, your BMS could, could be having issues. Um, there's all sorts of problems you could be having. If you're gonna build your own battery, you are gonna to wanna to check up on it once in a while. And you shouldn't think a passive balancer is gonna sit there and solve all your problems, okay? Uh, in addition to costing money. So the fact is you're gonna check your cells anyway. You might as well um, check them. And if you need to, I'd rather have you just do a good top balance than have the passive balancer fix things. Um, but the passive balancer is fine. The other thing to note is that most BMSs do have a passive balancer, but it's really small. It's usually in the order of like 50 milliamps. This is a really small amount of power. If you have a 280 amp hour cell, right, this is 50 milliamps, basically 0 0.05 amps, right, uh, amp hours that it can burn. So you're looking at something that if there is an imbalance of a few amps, it's still gonna take a very long time for the passive balancer to fix it. But it is still there, they are potentially still working. So, you know, if you have a BMS that has passive balancing, it will help you flatten these things out, but it is no excuse for not checking your cells. And again, if you've got great cells, it's just not necessary. It's like, why bother? Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a whole video on why it means you, even with a passive balancer, you can't skip the BMS. Okay, so this is the ideal scenario. This is if you have great cells. What if your cells aren't perfect? And the sad truth is a lot of us are ordering our cells. They're all coming from China. Uh, some of them are coming, you know, high end from China. And some of them, you know, maybe, maybe you're buying and they're, they're saying they're great cells and they're not. Um, so let's imagine a world where we have cells and we have different capacities in those cells. And this could totally happen to you, right? You, you could be buying cells and maybe there's like a 5% difference. And maybe it's in your favor. Maybe, for example, you order 280 amp hour cells and it turns out the smallest cell is 280 amp hours, but another is 290 and another for reasons that are just wonderful, is 300. Actually, these two should be switched. This will be our 300, and this will be our 290, because this one, the middle one is longest, right? So you bought 280 amp hour cells, and that's great, but it turns out you actually have a bunch of cells that are maybe a little bit bigger than that, okay? And as usual, because you watched my show or my channel, whatever you want to call this uh, endeavor, we top balance them, right? So when you top balance cells that are different capacities, remember that you only get the capacity 
of the smallest cell, right? So we'll have a battery now, it'll charge and discharge, but once the smallest cell, the 280 amp hour cell, this one, once that runs out of power, the BMS kicks in and the battery's like, hey, we're done, you have to charge us, there's no more power. Um, even though there is power in this middle cell and that middle cell, right? The other thing I talked about in my prior video is that, hey, when this cell is totally discharged, the voltages are gonna be really different, right? This cell is down to 2.5 volts, whereas this cell might be at three and this cell might be at 2.75. So, you know, if you hadn't watched my video, you might be like, hey, I balanced my cells and they, they don't match anymore. And again, remember that that's just because of what we're, of this visual, right? It's just because that some of these bigger cells still have capacity left in them. When you go and recharge, you're going to go right back to balance when you fully go up. But what happens if you've got these cells, these, these, these unbalanced, these cells that are not equal in capacity and you accident, not accidentally, you think, hey, I'm going to use a balancer. I'm gonna use a passive balancer. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. First, we're, when they're fully charged, right? As we see here, and they're balanced, the active balancer isn't gonna do anything. But by the time you fully discharge, your active balancer might kick in, right? A lot of active balancers activate around 30 millivolts. Well, if I'm at 2.5 volts here, and 2. Point, uh, let's say three volts, and 2.75 volts, your active balancer is gonna go, wow, there's a half volt difference between these guys. It's time for me to start balancing. What does a passive balancer do? Well, remember, it just burns power. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna to go to this cell and maybe this cell, depending on how big the gap is. If the gap is large enough, it'll go to that last cell. And it's just gonna burn off this extra power. So instead of having this earlier line, what we're now gonna have is this line, right? This is kind of an extreme example, so it might not be that bad. But now it's going to take that 3 volts, and it's going to convert it down to 2.5, and it's going to take that 2.75, and it's going to convert it down to 2.5, right? So now we're bottom balanced. And then what's going to happen? Well, if we recharge quickly, boom. Now we're going to, we're going to fill up all the way to the top here, and we'll have to stop again because the smallest cell – whoops, didn't mean to zoom in like that – because the smallest cell – got fully charged. Meanwhile, the middle cell is not fully charged anymore. It might be much lower than 3.65. Maybe it'll be at like 3.4. And this cell is the same thing. It'll be maybe like 3.5. These two other cells, they had that excess power burned off, right? And guess what? It didn't change a thing. We burned off that extra power. Remember when we were at the bottom, when we were totally flat and balanced, we burned off that extra power we bent our curve here so that they all had the same voltage. But when we recharged, guess what? Our voltage changed again because the first cell doesn't have as much capacity. So it filled up, it hit 3.65. But the other cells, they're at like 3.4 and 3.5 or whatever. Because guess what? We, we lost our top balance. We bottom balanced when we sat at the bottom. Okay? And by the time we got to the bottom, we were fully bottom balanced. And then we go to the top and we're fully top balanced. But it didn't change a thing. In the meantime, that all we could ever do was fill and lower out, uh, sorry, fill up and drain our smallest cell, this first cell one, right? So there wasn't actually any gain in performance in the battery. This passive balancer didn't do a thing for us. We were top balanced, and then it tried to get us to bottom balance, and then it tries, to, when you fill it up again and it's unbalanced, it's gonna try to top balance again. It's just gonna constantly be fighting you. It's just gonna constantly be draining and filling and draining and filling cells. But it can't, even if it works really quickly, even if it works instantaneous and keeps all the cells almost at the same voltage all the time, it can't ever increase the capacity of the total battery. You're still gonna be stuck between the best and the worst for the, for the smallest cell. You're gonna be going from the bottom of the smallest cell to the top of the smallest cell, and that's it. All you can ever do is have the other two cells look like it, right? But that's it. That's all it can ever, ever do. So why would you ever, why do you think a passive balancer would fix this problem? I don't know. Some people think I have unbalanced cells, I should use an active balancer. That seems crazy to me. All that's gonna do is take your top balance or your bottom balance and mess it up, and then try to get back to it when it's charged. And if you're, if you're let's, let me clear this real quick so we can see a better view. If we have three cells that are not fully balanced, let's say three really different cells, and we try uh, to top back, then we, sorry, let's say we, uh, we discharge. What we're gonna be doing is just constantly changing the curve. It'll change, it'll flatten us out. 
And then when we go back, whoop. Ooh, come on, it's not working for me today. There we go. <sighs> Then when we go back up here, you can see that we've lost our top balance, and then we'll go back, and then it'll flatten us out again, and then we'll lose it again. All you're gonna be doing is constantly chasing a different balance. But in the meantime, the only thing that's gonna matter is that capacity of the smallest cell. Also, you're gonna be burning power from your other cells that are larger, right? This cell is gonna be larger, when it's on the bottom, it's going to have to burn all this power. And then when it goes back up, it's going to have to burn power from your smallest cell so the other cells will be allowed to fill, right? And what if it's overnight? What if, what if you fill this up? What if you fill up your, fall, your smallest cell? The other two cells have lower voltages because you filled up faster than your passive balance could burn off the top. So then all of a sudden, this cell's full, this cell's not full, the second cell's not full, the third cell's not full. It's nighttime. Well, now the balance, passive balancer is just going to lower this and all of a sudden you're gonna you you had a whole day to charge and you easily could have done it but now you didn't do it because all you did was equalize the power between these first two cells or even you're gonna actually go to the bottom the lowest cell right so you might you might equalize there when you could have had a full battery now that middle cell is gonna lower burn power to catch up with that lowest cell and then if the next day is cloudy or the next day you get snow and you don't have power you're gonna have lost out on power that you could have had because you messed up your balance down here, and then when you got to the top, uh, your battery tried to balance at the, vol the voltage of the lowest voltage cell. That's all passive balancers do, is they lower the voltage to the voltage of the lowest cell. They don't actually help you do anything. So I don't know why you'd need a passive balancer for this situation. I think it would, if you had bad cells, I think it'd be actually a lot worse than just balancing them and using a BMS. Um, Using a passive balancer, even with uh, with a BMS, it's not going to actually help, and it's just going to mess up your balance all the time, and it might cause you to lose that on power once in a while because you're just going to be constantly messing up your curves. So I would really suggest don't bother with a passive balancer in either situation. If you're in the first situation where you have three cells that all have exactly the same total capacity, best case scenario, it's not doing anything. Um, maybe it'll help you stop, you know, maybe it'll, uh, you have, you'll do a little bit less maintenance on your cells, but you're spending money and it's not actually doing much for you. Sometimes you might be in the second situation though, and think you're in the first situation. If you think you're in a great situation where you have perfect cells, but it turns out they're not perfect. This active balancer is just going to cause constant problems, give you really weird cell readings and not actually do anything. It'll just, it could, it could hurt you and it certainly can't help you. It's burning power from your cells unnecessarily, which is also just using up your cells because your cells are, you know, the more power, the more times you use the cells, the less, you only have a limited number of time to use your cells. So if you're burning power from your cells just to balance things out without any benefit, you're actually aging your cells. And in the meantime, you're not getting anything in return. So sorry if I went too fast in this video. Sorry if this isn't clear, but I really think that passive balancers just, don't make a ton of sense in almost any situation. It's, in my opinion, it's always better to top balance your cells or bottom balance your cells, depending on your needs, and slapping a BMS on there. Putting passive balancers on there is not going to help. As I said before, most of your BMSs are going to have some form of bottom of, of passive balancing, but that passive balancing usually kicks in only at around 0 .3, 0 .0 0 0.03 volts or 30 uh, millivolts. So, which is a, a decent size gap. And again, the capacity of that passive balancing on your BMS is really limited. So it's not actually doing that much, especially if you're dealing with these big 280 amp hour plus cells, right? So I personally think that the passive balancer on your BMS is probably not a problem. It might help defer some maintenance. Um, so I wouldn't worry about the passive balancer on your BMS, but I would never buy a big passive balancer that's gonna burn a lot of power off my cells. I, I just don't think it can help you. I think it can hurt you um, and it's not worth the time or the money or the extra complexity in your cells, uh, in your battery. If this video was useful, please like or subscribe, uh, or please do both actually. Uh, you'd be shocked at how much time it took me to put this video together, and I think it's still not nearly as good as it could be. So I appreciate your views, and definitely ask me any questions, and uh, you know, questions or comments, feedback is really helpful. Thanks guys.